and this is a Red Tiger T27 4K mirror dash cam. And since its release, Red Tiger has had several firmware updates to it where they have added some really cool new options, but also one really cool feature that I think a lot of people are really gonna like. They have been asking for this feature for quite a bit of time. So make sure you guys stay tuned till the end of the video so you can see that special new feature. And if you have not seen my original review for this dash cam, I'll put a link to that review in the description down below, along with a link to this dash cam in case you wanna get one for your Yourself. On this video, I'm gonna give you a complete tour of all the menu items and my personally recommended settings for this dash cam. And to access the settings, I'm gonna tap on the screen and then I'm gonna press this little gear icon. And the very first setting we have is resolution, where we have the choice of running the front camera at 4K and the rear camera at 2.5K, or both the front and the rear at 2.5K plus 2.5K. I like to have mine on the highest resolution, which is 4K plus 2.5K. Going back to the front, we have split time. Now this is on most dash cams called loop recording. All dash cams record in loop recording, which means they record video continuously, but they segment that video in smaller manageable chunks. And here we can select the size of those chunks of video. There is no incorrect number to pick in here. You can pick one, three, or five. I like three. I think that produces a nice in between. And then we have the video encoding. We have two choices here. H264 and H265. Normally, if you have an older computer, you're gonna have better luck playing back the videos from this dash cam if you use this at H264. However, if you have a newer computer or a newer phone, you will be able to play them in H265. Now, H265 does produce a smaller file size, so you will potentially be able to fit more in your memory card by having H265 selected. The other advantage of H265 is that it produces really the same level of quality as H264, so we get more storage in our car with the same video quality. Then we have sound record. We can choose whether we want this dash cam to only record video or record video or sound. I like to leave the sound recording function on. Then we have the G sensor sensitivity. This dash cam can detect when your car gets hit and when it gets involved in a car crash, it's gonna put that video into the folder of car crashes videos. If we do not turn that function on, you're still gonna have a record of that car crash, but the video will not be saved separately. And I like to do that to protect the video, so I'm gonna turn that function on. And we get three levels of how sensitive we want this dash cam to to be to detecting a car crash. We can have it in low, middle, or high. However, if you set this thing too high, every time that you close the door on your vehicle or maybe a car with a lot of exhaust passes, it might create a false alert where the dash cam thinks you got into a car crash. I recommend experimenting with the setting, but so far I had the best luck with the low setting. And if this dash cam is hardwired, you'll get an additional function called parking mode. And if I click on that, we get two choices. The very first choice is to have the the parking mode monitor the car on based on it feels when it got crashed into just like before by the G sensor setting we can select between low middle or high. Again, if I select too high of a setting here, I might end up recording a lot of false alerts where the dash cam thinks, oh, oh, the car got hit or got crashed into when it got parked and it was really just a car with a loud exhaust passing by. So in here, again, I recommend experimenting with the setting. I do leave mine on high because I do wanna capture even as much as if somebody just leans on my car. I'd rather end up with that false alert than not have a potential incident capture. However, if you choose to record a time lapse, you will turn this function off and now we can see that we are given the option to go to time lapse. And in time lapse, we have a couple of choices. We can record 12 hours, 24 hours, or 48 hours of video in a compressed format to produce a time lapse. And we also get to tell the dash cam how to create a time lapse. We can take one picture every second, one picture every two seconds, or one picture every three seconds. Now, if you want a fluid time lapse, you will want to select one picture every second. If you're trying to fit a lot of a lot of hours as much as possible, then you will select three one picture every three seconds. But I don't really use time lapse. I like to use the G sensor for detecting when my car got hit. So I'm gonna leave this on high. The next option is flicker reduction. And this you wanna set at 50 Hertz if you're in Europe or 60 Hertz if you are in the United States. And what this is gonna do, this is gonna reduce the amount of flickering that you may get from any potential lights that you might record with this dash cam. And the next option is the screensaver mode. And here we get three choices, off, turn off the screen 
or time screen saver. If I select off, that means that my dash cam is gonna stay on all the time and it's gonna work like a digital mirror all the time. That is my preferred setting. However, let's talk about the next one, turn off the screen. We can tell this dash cam to eventually turn off the screen, perhaps after 15 seconds or after one minute of driving or after three minutes of driving. And the screen is gonna turn off completely while the dash cam still records. And this is gonna look and act like a normal mirror. Nobody's gonna know that this dash cam is recording recording or that this is a dash cam. So this is a, allows for recording in what I call stealth mode recording. <laughs> there it goes, the screen was about to turn off. So I'm gonna go back over here and now we're gonna talk about the time screen saver. Now this is a really neat feature that I have not seen before and let me show you what that looks like. And this is what that function looks like. This is not very common on mirror dash cams where they partially turn off. So now we're gonna use this as a regular mirror. However, we are still recording and we are still presented with some very minimal information. In this case, the direction that we're heading, our miles per hour, the data and time and a confirmation that yep in fact we are recording and if any time we want to turn on the full display I can just tap on the screen. So those are the three choices that you get for screensaver however as I mentioned earlier I like to have my digital mirror on all the time so I'm going to turn off the screensaver mode. Next we have the click tone. Now this is a function that I always turn off because if I turn this on notice the sound you get <laughs> like I'm dialing an old school phone. I find that sound sort of annoying, so I'm gonna turn that click tone off. And the next function is volume. If we have the click tone enabled, this is gonna control that volume of that tone that you hear, that tit tit tit. However, this is also gonna control the sound of the videos that are being played back on this dash cam. So I like to leave this volume all the way up so I can hear my videos play back clearly. Next, we have the screen brightness. And if you saw my full review video for this dash cam, you know we can adjust the brightness directly from the main screen. However, they've given us here a second way of adjusting the brightness. I leave mine on full blast all the time, but some people do turn that down at night. And the next option is display mode. And here we can tell the dash cam what view to show us by default. Since I like to use this as a digital mirror, I always like to have the rear view on selected. However, if for some reason you like to see the front view instead, you can change that to front. But the last two options are the ones that are very interesting because most dash cams will not let you change this. If I go with the PIP on the left, we're gonna be able to see the reversing camera on the left hand side of the screen and the front camera on the right hand side. But what if I wanna flip those views? We can do that by going back in here and select it PIP on the right. And if we go back to the front, notice that we have effectively moved the rear camera to the right hand side and the front camera to the left hand side, which is pretty cool and convenient and I like that they included that option. Moving over to the second part of this menu, we have rear image adjustment. And this allows us to change the way that the rear camera is displayed. And let's go back to the front view so we can see that. Notice how the car is in the correct position. However, if I were to install the rear camera upside down, now the car is upside down. I can go back into the rear image adjustment and I can correct that by turning off the first function and you'll notice that the car now is in the correct way, facing the correct way. But also let me show you the second adjustment. The second adjustment for rear image adjustment is called rear mirror. And I'm gonna turn this function back on and let me show you the front view. Again, the car is in the correct position but is facing the left hand side. What if I wanted to flip that image so the car faces the other way? I can go back in here, go back to rear image adjustment, turn the mirror and function off, and if you notice, the car view has flipped. It's still facing up, but it has flipped in the opposite direction. And that is what these two functions do. They allow us to correct any rear camera placement issues so it can be correctly shown on the dash cam. The next option is the rear camera brightness adjustment. Now this is a new function that was introduced in one of the recent firmware updates and it allows us to change the brightness of the rear camera. If you find that the image in the rear camera is a little too dark, we can bump up the brightness by going in here and selecting middle or selecting high. I leave mine on a high all the time. That seems to have provided me with the best results so far. The next option is time display. And I wanna show you what that is by going back to the front view. As you can see right now, we have some information over here, but if I go back into that function and I turn that off, 
you're gonna notice that that information has disappeared. Now this allows you to have a very clean view because you have reduced the amount of information, the amount of cluttering that may be on the mirror. I like to see what day it is. It doesn't really bother me. It's kind of small, the information. So I leave this function on. The next function allows us to change between AM, PM time format or a 24 hour time format, which some people refer to as military time. I like to leave my dash cam to display the time in AM, PM. So I'm gonna select the 12 hour format. Next we have daylight savings time. Now this is very convenient if you happen to live in a state like I do that changes the time often. By turning this function off, we can correct for that one hour change or by turning that function on, we can adjust for that time hour change. Again, when daylight savings time becomes active in your area and that is very convenient as opposed to having to manually adjust that time. Next up, we have the date format option. And here we can select between three different formats, having the year first, the month, and then the day or the date, the month and the year, or my preferred one, month, day and the year. Moving over to the third section of this menu, we have the reverse mode. And the reverse mode has two functions, either the full screen or the panorama display. Let me show you what the full screen looks like. If we connect the optional red wire to the reversing tail lights of the vehicle, when we put the car into reverse, the dash cam is automatically gonna bring up the parking assist lines. But notice how the image feels completely the mirror. Now I'm gonna turn this off and let's go back over here and let's change that to the second function, which is the panorama display. Going back to the front, again, I'm gonna put the car onto reverse and you'll notice that the parking assist is gonna look very different. We still get the lines, but now we have a full zoomed out image. Instead of only being shown a portion of the video stretched out over the full mirror, now we have the entire image. However, because the entire image is a square, it causes these black lines on either side. Now, I recommend experimenting with one or the other to see which one you prefer. You can also change that here. Now this is if you wanted to change that manually through here. The other setting that I showed you on the menu is how you want that to be shown by default. I normally leave mine on full screen display. Next up, we have the fatigue reminder. This dash cam can remind you to rest every two hours. I like that feature. I think it's a nice safety feature, so I turn that function on. Then we have the speed unit, where we can change between kilometers an hour or miles per hour. Next up, we have the time zone settings. And this dash cam is pulling the date and time automatically from the GPS, but we have to tell it where we are located at. If we do not set the correct time zone, we are gonna potentially get the incorrect date or incorrect time. The next function is GPS information. There is nothing to change on here. This just allows us to see how many satellites the GPS has acquired. And the next function is GPS display, where we get two options, either off or on. And let me show you what this does. Going back to the front view, as you can see, we have a graphic here with a compass and our speed. However, if we do not care for that information, we can turn that off. I'm gonna click off and going back to the front. And as you can see, that information has disappeared. So technically, if you turn off the date information and also the GPS display information, you could end up with this view, which is a very, very clean view. Most dash cams I've seen are very busy with graphics everywhere. Here, we only have the essential, which is, is the dash cam recording or not? And the last portion of this menu allows us to change the language. And here we have several languages to choose from. I'm gonna leave mine in English. Then we have the format SD card option. And this allows us to completely erase the contents of the memory card by hitting confirm on here. This function is also recommended every time we install a brand new memory card to be formatted using this function. The next option is to reset the factory defaults. If for some reason we change something on the dash cam and we don't know how to return it back to normal, we can reset this to how it was when we originally bought it. And on the last option, there is nothing to change on here. However, this will show us what current software or what current firmware this dash cam is running. But in the beginning of the video, I mentioned that they have added a brand new function to this dash cam in one of the recent firmware updates, a function that is extremely rare and I have not found in other dash cams that are out available in the market. And a lot of people have asked me about this. Notice the rear view. This has a full wide angle view and most people like that because now you can see a little more to the left and more to the right. However, this can change the perspective. Things are gonna look farther and some people have trouble adjusting to that. So if you wanted to simulate your all mirror while still having the benefits of a digital mirror, 
Notice how I'm gonna drag my finger on this side. We can zoom in to reduce that wide angle view so it will look like our old mirror. And notice because now we have adjusted the angle, things are closer now and we don't have to readjust to a perspective change. And we can choose to leave it somewhere in the middle if we only wanted that to be a little bit or all the way to fully simulate our old standard glass mirror. That is really cool. I am glad they added this option. I think a lot of people are gonna benefit from having the zoom capability. And now that you know how to use this dash cam to its full potential, make sure you hit the thumbs up button to support the channel. And if you wanna get this dash cam, remember I placed a link in the description down below for it. And if you have any other questions regarding the T27 Red Tiger dash cam, please put that in the comments down below and stay tuned as I have a lot more dash cam videos coming up. Thank you guys for watching and as always I'll see you on the next one.